Good morning, and welcome to Crown Rock Alliance Church online service. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Uh, whether you're local in Crown Rock from the East Kootenai, joining us across the country or from a different country, we're glad that you're here. And on that note, we would love to get to know you. So if you are just visiting, if I can say that, us this morning at Crown Rock Alliance or your first time checking us out um, on YouTube or through our website, uh, we would just love to get to know who you are. So if you would mind taking a second and just filling out a little form on our website, probably where you found us, um, just above our worship service, uh, we would just like to get to know who you are, why you're here, how we can help you get connected. Um, if you're looking for something specific, and also prayer. We would love to be able to pray for you as a staff team, as a church family, as a community. So um, that welcome connecting card is online for you. And take a second, check it out, fill it out. Let us know who you are. But again, thank you for joining us wherever you are. I have just got a couple things to let you know about and remind you of. Coming up this Wednesday, February 24th at 6.30 on Zoom, we will be holding another information session for membership. So if that is something you've heard me mention multiple times over the last couple months and you're still wondering what that means, what it entails, how you can get involved with that, this is for you. So Wednesday 6.30 on Zoom, a membership information session and it'll just talk about what it means to make that commitment to the local church, um, the things that it kind of gets you or <laughs> allows you to partake in um, and that's like things about building, um, elder elections, things like that. So um, again, just a commitment to the local church is membership. If you want more information, Wednesday, 6.30 on Zoom. Also, this coming Tuesday for Pursuit is your golf of Palooza night. So that's middle school youth group. If you have a putter, bring that along for you, with you. And then coming up on Friday is a joint revive and pursuit event. And that is the Fast for Them um, Compassion Fundraiser to bring awareness to um, and just talk about and raise money for poverty um, in just third world countries, things like that. So a joint Revive and Pursuit Youth event this coming Friday. If you need more information, get in contact with Pastor Jordan and he will fill you in. Um, I am just going to highlight our prayer line. Again, we would love to be praying for you. It doesn't have to be public. It can, you can send something in confidential that is just brought to the elders' attention or pastoral attention. Um, but I'm going to read off the phone number here for our 24-7 prayer line or prayer chain. Um, it is also on our website. So if you miss this number, you can rewind or check out our website. But um, 1-888-633-2080. That is our prayer chain line. Um, again, we would love to just pray for you, whether it's just day-to-day -day, um, pandemic, COVID life stuff, um, or big life decisions, whether it's illness, things like that. Um, that prayer chain is available, not just for our church members, but as I said, if you're just visiting us and you would like prayer for something, check that out. Um, it'd be our honor, our pleasure to pray with you and for you. As always, you can find more information about the couple things that I mentioned and so much more that's going on around here on our website, cranbrookalliancechurch.com. Um, get all the information, all the details. There's events happening every day around this building. Um, so check it out. And thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Thanks, Christy. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Just uh, if you're wondering who Pastor Jordan is, that's me. And if you're wondering what this Fast for Them thing is, let me tell you. Uh, a long time ago, uh, Rhonda Wilson, if you remember her, she started this uh, program in the Philippines called the Child Survival Program that brought in Compassion International to meet the needs of pregnant mothers and to raise children out of poverty even before they left the womb. And so our project this year is actually to support that same project uh, to reach uh, and support more women and children uh, to alleviate poverty over there in third world countries that have been infected so much more by COVID-19 than uh, any other place. Uh, we might think it's rough, but it is super rough on a third world country. So if you'd like to have your money have a double impact, you can support this, but also you can find a teenager that is doing this and encourage them to do that because it's a, it's a pledge sort of thing. They're going to fast for 40 hours and raise money for this. So find a teenager, donate to that, and have, it, have double impact. And uh, we're going to talk about the same sort of topic this morning on giving. Uh, excited for the message from Pastor Grant. So would you join us as we head into worship, which is a whole life thing. Father, thank you that we have breath in our lungs, 
uh, to glorify you. And we ask by your spirit to, to be led in this. Thank you that we just get to reflect your beauty and your glory back to you. We praise your name this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing, You Are Good. good and your mercy endure it forever Lord you are good and your mercy endure it forever people from every nation and tongue from generation to generation we worship you you 
It's important for us at this moment in the service just to take a pastoral minute and bring our hearts together to the Lord in surrender in response to the music and worship, in response to our Father who loves us so profoundly in such a big way we can't even quantify it, put it into words. So I invite you to join me in this time of reflective prayer. What is it that you need to just turn over to Him today? to release, to give up, to say yes to his will. Something you need to forgive, something you need to do, something you need to stop doing, or maybe you just need to rest in his presence and quietly receive the love of the Father. So Father, we collectively surrender to you in this great act of laying down our lives before you again, as your word refers to living sacrifices because of your great mercy, knowing that you take us up and you breathe in us new life from your Holy Spirit. Refresh us again, Holy Spirit. We pray that you would pour into each one of us buckets of your grace, the endless and so necessary renewing of your spirit in Christ's holy name. We want to take just a moment for a Tim talk today in ministry chat. How are you doing in all that's going on in our world? Or it might be appropriate to ask all that's not going on in your world. Some people taking other people to court because their churches can't be open and so on. How are we doing in all of this? Well, look, there's this beautiful passage in 2 Timothy where the Apostle Paul challenges young Timothy, saying, fan into flame the gift God has given you. And so this is a time for fanning into flame the gift God has given us to serve with. And then he says, for you have not been given a spirit of fear or timidity, but of love, power, and self-discipline. So, the message is, do not react with fear, but lead with faith. This is a time for disciples of Jesus Christ to leave, lead with faith and hope and love. To shine in the world in a way that says, Christ is alive and vivid whether we're gathering together in a building or not, he is still Lord. It's about him and his presence. How can we be Christ's presence? By not reacting with fear, but leading with faith. Recently, our leadership board in our church has been talking about vision, looking forward. And so we want to just encourage us to be praying for, over the next five years, our membership to grow by 50%, to see 50 new believers in Christ baptized over those five years. And do you have a connecting ministry? Has God gifted you with connecting with other people? Is that something you need to fan into flame? If it is, I want to hear from you because we're launching a connectors ministry where we're looking for people who would say every quarter, in the year, I will make contact with these five households. We don't want people to, so to speak, fall through the cracks. This goes beyond COVID-19 when things return to normal. Connectors ministry will persist. And so the first step in all of this is to pray. And so I want to invite you, starting on March 7th, that's a Sunday evening, we'll be announcing the time and details in the weeks to come. 
but I want to invite you to join in a time of, let's call it School of Prayer, where we take a little bit of time, just a few minutes, for a bit of reminder, instruction about prayer and encouragement in prayer, but mostly to pray for that hour. Pray for the things we just talked about. Pray for the Holy Spirit to pour in and through us as the Church of Jesus Christ. Keep that in mind, March 7th. Another great thing that we pray for, that we support, is international ministry. And this morning we have a video from Kimi Toyota about His Hope Uganda we want to share with you before the message. It's interesting that the theme of giving has been flowing through this morning. So please give your attention to Kimi and your prayers for her and for His Hope Uganda as you watch this message from her. We are having one of those minor technical difficulties. So just bear with us for a moment and I'll try and think of something else to say. And they'll give me the thumbs up in just a minute saying that it's all good and we're able to operate. So again, I just want to reiterate those things that we've been talking about in terms of vision. We believe that the Lord is alive and powerful in His church and in the world. And so we want to use this time to grow in the kingdom of God, to grow our lives personally, but also to reach beyond. And one of the things I'm going to be inviting today as a response to the message is to see if there is a triad, that's three people, or even a small group of people who would like to engage in finding out more about how we may be present with practical needs in our own community here in our city. If you're from a different place, you might want to engage with this with your community and figure out how you can serve in that way. And so, do you have a burden for our own community and the practical, physical, material needs you see here? It would be great if we had a group of people who could look into that more and find out how we can be with the community, not just in the community, but with it. Someone has said that the best way to gain insight is to be on site. And I think that's a very practical reality for us. So I want to encourage you to be praying about that and let me know if you'd like to be part of forming that kind of group that does some learning and some insight into our community and how we may serve. Now I'm just going to ask, how are we doing with that minor technical difficulty? Are we getting close?